the safety of God's friendship. The safety of God's friendship. Friends, I know that it's a unfortunate thing for us many times when you know, sometimes every now and then, I, I'm not, I know I'm not speaking to y'all, I'm only speaking to me. But sometimes, it seems sometimes troubling to us when we lose a friend, sometimes even more than family members. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, stir up any pots or trying to bring up anything that tends to, you know, want to uh, open up some sore wounds and, and put some salt in it. But, but what the problem we have oftentimes is the fact that we place a large amount of emphasis on relationships than we do on fellowships. Now, the problem is that fellowships is mentioned 32 times in the New Testament alone, while the term relationship is not mentioned once. But yet, we place emphasis on relationships than we do fellowships. The word relationship, and I'm just going to give y'all a little bit of a teachable moment here. The word relationship comes from the Greek word kanonia. And the Greek word kanonia just simply means that it's a two-way street of honor and love being returned unto one another. The issue becomes, well, when we don't have a two-way street, what is that called? That is called a relationship. And a relationship, unfortunately, friends, tends to basically, get, it don't even need to do anything, even be alive in order to have a relationship. I have a relationship with my great-great-grandma and I never met her before because she died long before my great-grandfather was born. But the problem is, is the fact that when you look at the fact that I, my, 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 the relationship I have with her is as my great-great-great-grandmother, I didn't have fellowship with her. I didn't have the opportunity to resp restore that which God, or I would have the opportunity to have her initiate with me because of what she had in common with me, which was our relationship that we had together. So the relationship, I didn't have a chance to return to her honor, nor did I have a chance to return to her love. All I had was a relationship to know that I have a commonality with her. I was able to be born from her child's child's child. And because of that, that basically meant that that's the only thing I have in common. Somebody would like to say from an old adage that blood is thicker than water. But friends, let me help us out with this particular passage. Love is thicker than blood because without the love, you do not have the blood. Amen. Amen. All right, all that's right. right. All right. Now, what is the blood? Well, I'm glad y'all asked this. The blood is a symbol of life. You know, I'll talk about living versus existence. It is a symbol of zoe. It is a symbol of that which actually is the force that allows us to continue. But existence is a little bit less than that because all you need to exist is just be here. You don't need the blood to redeem anything because the blood is symbolic of the fact that I have to exchange one thing for another in order for me to know what abundance of life is. And because I have to exchange one thing for another in order to understand what the abundance of life is, that's why over in the wilderness, as we see in the book of Leviticus, they had a scapegoat. What they would do is they would take the blood of a sheep and then they would place that blood on the forehead of a goat and then what they would do is they would actually have yet another goat and they would actually sacrifice 
that particular goat. But as they sacrificed that goat, they basically went and let the goat that they put the cross on go out into the wilderness. And then somebody, after three days, y'all don't like this part, after three days, they had to go back and go find the goat that they had released into the wilderness. I don't think y'all hear me today. I don't know about y'all, but if you understand that Jesus had died and Jesus was buried, he was buried Friday and he was buried Saturday and on the third day morning, they had to go to the tomb and find out where the blood that was scattered uh, for our sake was and it was the scapegoat called Jesus that had to be taken and had to be observed to have risen and the reason why he rose wasn't because of the relationship. He rose to restore the fellowship that was lost in the garden. Oh, what a fellowship. What a joy divine. I'm leaning on his everlasting arms. What a blessedness and what a peace is mine. I'm leaning on his everlasting arms. That's what you can do with somebody that you have a relationship with. No, you can only do that with somebody you have a fellowship with. I'm leaning on Jesus. I am leaning on Jesus. I am safe and secure from all alarms. I'm leaning on Jesus. I am leaning on Jesus. I'm leaning on Him. Everlasting on. But we place too much of an emphasis on relationship. We have to be good and, and go up again cognizant of our fellowship that we have in Christ. Y'all probably said, what does that have to do with today's lesson? Well, very quickly, in today's lesson, friends. We see here John is writing to the diaspora. In other words, to those who had been scattered abroad, those Jewish Christians who had been persecuted. And many theologians believe that it was in Ephesus that here it is, John, in his elderly stage, was writing this particular epistle to encourage them that despite what it looks like, Everything is going to be all right. all right. And one of the things he did was he penned a very powerful division here in this particular letter. When he says something here, as we looked at in verse 4, and listen, he says, You are of God, little children. Listen, let's stop right there. Little children is the Greek word technion. And technion is where we get the term technology from, believe it or not. And technion means that, that that system of looking at God instead of simply as just an end or a genie in somebody's sky. He's a, he's a lot more than that because he's a God that has initiated the, that very thing that he requires those that believe him to actually give back to him in fellowship. Listen, God initiated love. Because how many of us recognize that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But it is also known that God initiated honor because he initiated honor when he created us in his image and after his likeness. Why? Because he actually, after he created us in his image, after his likeness, it was only after that part of creation where he pronounced it very good. Yes, right. Everything else was good. But after he finished with man, he said it was very good. That's honor. That's honor. So God initiated, by the way, how many of us know that every fellowship, it has to be initiated right. by the love and honor coming to you before we can respond to it. Right. 
Because we can't do it at the same time. Because otherwise, you will never be able to recognize it. So here's the thing. We see that God initiated love and honor ever before we even knew how to recognize it. Even in the garden. And we also know that here's the Lord. And here is the Lord telling us through John's pen that the honor and the love that has been initiated, we don't place a large amount of trust and, and emphasis in the power that that initiation of fellowship has because we don't want to return the favor. We don't want to return the two-way street. So then what we do is we start basically trying to find, can I say it, y'all, excuses as to the reason why God doesn't deserve our consideration in response in fellowship. Amen. Right. <laughs> Pardon me. The first thing is, is that we start believing false prophets. Oh my God. Verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Amen. We would rather believe false prophets thereby choosing ourselves and thereby choosing neither life nor existence than we would by believing God. Because here's the Lord telling us in verse 2 something interesting. He said, if hereby know we the spirit of God, every spirit that is confessed that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. God, we would rather believe folks to tell us that we can go ahead and name it and claim it. Instead of, it, but yet we don't want to name and claim the fellowship. We'd rather name and claim the stuff. Which, by the way, it all belongs to God. We talked about that this morning. What doesn't belong to God? Here's David writing, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they and those that dwell therein. Not only does the, the stuff belong to God, but the people do too. Right. Right. Here's the psalmist that also tells us it is he that made us and not we ourselves. Even we don't even originate from ourselves. Even my mama didn't originate me. She was the birth canal that got me here. But in terms of how I got here for real, it was before was formed in the belly. God knew me. That's over there in Jeremiah the first chapter. Amen. So God planned you. Okay. Yes, he did. Mama didn't plan me. All right. But that doesn't mean I wasn't planned. All right. That meant that the consideration that I have in terms of what God has done to initiate fellowship is extremely important because friends, that's where the power is. Verse 4. Ye are God, little children, and have overcome them. That's where the power is, y'all, in the fellowship. Right. And all you have to do is look at because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Right, right. That's power in that. Yes, sir. If you are God, that means that you already have the initiation of the fellowship, then it's up to us to return unto him the honor and love that he first gave to us. Because if you go down a little bit further, <laughs> then we also know that we love God because he first loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Down in verse 10. So, friends, we've got all kinds of stuff that we want to make ourselves and avail ourselves and think we want to take credit. And I'm not good unless I can take credit for this, whatever this is. Y'all fill in the blank. I got to make sure that I get the credit for getting myself out of this mess. Well, friends, we weren't even responsible for us breathing this morning, but yet we want to get ourselves out of messes that we can't be in if we weren't breathing. 
Not to mention the fact on top of all that, we want to get ourselves and we want to talk about how much we have done over the course of time, whether it be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. The problem is, is the fact that the 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years came as a result of the grace of God. Amen. His unmerited favor. In other words, favor that we did not, will not, and could not earn. So if we could not earn caddis or grace, how do we think that anything that we do is going to be sufficient enough for us to try to think about being equal with God, to choose ourselves over the power that is of God? How many of you recognize that you don't need to be ashamed of the gospel because that shows your fellowship with the Lord? For dude, I am not ashamed. Of the gospel, for it is the power, the exousia of God unto everyone that Come believes. Right, right. So I'm not worried about what it is that you want me to do. Okay. Your pass on the back ain't gonna make no difference because you ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. So if you're gonna make a difference, in not only your friends and your family's life, then help them understand this truth. Verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Amen. So that means you got some power. Not because of who you are, but because of who he is. He is love because he is love. Yeah, I got power. How many people know what the songwriter has to say? It's power. Power. Wonder working. Power. Let me tell you what we talked about just earlier. In the blood of the Lamb. Because he thought it not a robbery, talking about Jesus, to be equal with God. But because he is equal with God, he actually became flesh. Because he loved us so much. And because he loved us so much and became the satisfying sacrifice, the propitiation for our sins. That means that no matter what it is that we think of about relationship. We all have a relationship with God. He is the creator and we are the created. And because of that, my friends, we all have a relationship with God. But Jesus did not die. He did not stay buried and did not rise for the relationship to be restored. He never lost that. He rose to restore the fellowship, his voice walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It was because of the fellowship that God is the one that is able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before his own presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever is the If he died because of the relationship, he would have died. Okay. He never had, he never lost it. Amen. He died so that he can walk with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he can talk with you. Yes, and he can tell you right. that you are his own. Yes, so that the joy yes, you share yes. as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He did it in the garden, y'all. And he's done it through his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth 
You all get more than a pat on the back. You won't perish. But you shall be at his feet. You shall be where he is. Friends, I don't know about you, but it's great to know I got a fellowship with God because, see, I know that I am not going to worry about what he shall look like. Because I already know what I'm going to look like. And here's what I know in me looking like. You see this here in the same book of 1 John. And we know what we are going to look like because we're going to look just like him. So as he is, so are we. So friends, y'all are asking me, well, what that got to do with the price of tea in China here? Well, as I close my Bible, I'm going to tell you, y'all. We spend the bulk of our lives hunting for fool's gold in external validation. We think that somebody is pat on the back is what's going to get us to make it on me. Come on. And friends, when they have a heaven and hell to put you in, that's when we need to close up shop. Yes, we need to lock these doors up, get the light company, get center point to turn these lights off. Get you know, get the gas company just to, you know, just to disconnect the gas lines. And we need to go and worship that person. They got a hell and a hell to put you in. Right. But what we find ourselves doing is we worship the pat on the back that only lasts that long. And because the pat on the back only lasted that long, that's the reason why we are satisfied with the pat on the back that only lasted that long. Amen. And so then what ends up happening is, my friends, we find ways to get ourselves in a lot of trouble because we think pats on the back is the point of life. And we become addicted to it. Here's, if you got, if, here's what I would rather tell us, that instead of being addicted to something, how about we look for, instead of just simply being happy, how about we look for fulfillment? How about we look for, for being fully filled? Instead of just simply being happy. See, happy lasts as long as the pat on the back lasts. But fulfillment lasts for eternity. Amen. Because I know something. The reason why I know that fulfillment lasts that long. Because if I re recognize the 8th chapter of the book of, of Romans. Then I also know that if I am walking with the Lord. I know that there is no condemnation to those who have made the Lord their choice. Because when you make the Lord your choice and you are without condemnation, that means there's nothing that man can do to you or say about you that's going to make any difference in terms of your cup being filled. Come here, David. I may not always understand, David, why you had to be having the table prepared for you in the presence of of your enemies and I may not always understand why it is you had to have your head anointed but I do know this one thing that his cup was going to run over and friends there's a difference between simply just putting something in the cup and filling the cup up totally and let me tell you what that's called that's called to fully fill it that's called fulfillment right. and that fulfillment comes because friends of who God is and what you realize him to be Amen. in return of fellowship to you. So what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Instead of the fulfillment that only the Lord in his fellowship can provide. 
Oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. So what about you today, friends? I'm through. I'm finished. I, what should our prayer be in order for it to be effectual? Well, the first thing that should be sought after in even before we pray is our humility. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive you of your sins and I will heal your land. That sounds fulfilling to me. It's fulfillment. You want the definition? There it is. Fulfilled. Fully filled because of what God has done. When you make the Lord your choice, you can know the fulfillment of Christ, your own sin. Come on, you didn't labor. And I have a labor. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn
And your purpose is the same as my purpose. It's the same of all of our purpose, whether we recognize it or not. Our purpose, as we see, is so that when God gifted us, we may show the glory of God through our works. The chapter of Matthew, Sermon on the Mount, discourse. So, what is it going to be today, my friends? It's going to be about you and what you want to do. And our lust, wiles, and affections that have gotten us as well. Was it about our fulfillment and recognizing that once we're in His hand, no man can pluck us out? He said, "Those that exalt themselves, I will abase; but those that those that humble themselves, I will exalt. I fulfill them. Do it. The doors of the church."